When you think about this four hour chart, I want you to think of weekly highs and weekly lows. Let me explain. So here you see the GBP JPY on the four hour chart, right? Really quick to the weekly chart. Let me show you something. Let's go to the weekly. So let's say we're right here. The move has already started down, right? We're right here. We project the move to go all the way down to this level. So anywhere in this area, you can hop in in the trading zone. Here's what I mean by that. So let's put the candle, let's put the line right here. Or we can put it right here, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter which candle, because each candle represents a week. So once you put the line here, you're talking about the close of this candle, which essentially, if you're looking at the close of this candle, then your next week is going to start here on this candle. And once you drop it to the four hour time frame, you should be at the beginning of the week or so just at the beginning of the week on the session breaks. Take a look. Four hour. Watch this. Let's find that spot. OK, here it is right here. Check it out. Now. So here it is right here. Now you guys saw. You're not going to be able to see that. So you guys saw you guys saw that on the weekly chart that the overall trend was down, correct? The overall trend was down. So you're looking for a move to the downside. Here we go. So hit right here, you'll see. This is the beginning of the new week. Because remember, from this line to this line represents one week of price data on the four hour chart. And you know that you're looking for a move to the downside. So all you want to do is this. You're just looking for essentially a pullback, a pullback, to the overbought or oversold condition, right? Somewhere around here. This is a better signal here. But even if you took the signal right here, you're fine. Because guess what? You take the signal down, you take it here, or you take it off this candle right here. Either or, you're taking the signal down. Now, no matter where you take the signal, the stop loss is gonna go at the high of the previous week, if you're going short. So if you take the signal here, the high of the previous week in this area, and here was the high. Here was the high right here. So since you have a, a level right here, you just essentially you'll put your stop loss right back here. So why would you put the stop loss here? Here's the importance of the stop loss. Again, if you go back to the weekly chart, you see the momentum is down. Oh, don't want to lose my spot. You see the momentum is down. And that's as far as we can go, guys, because you, you're only going to see about this much price data. Don't pay attention to this because this move here, this move right here in this area hasn't happened yet. So don't pay attention to this. What you're looking at is they move down with the oscillator. You're looking at the momentum down. So you're looking right here, right? You know you want to be trading down. So let's hop back to the weekly chart. I mean the four hour chart, I'm sorry. Let's go back and find our spot again. Let's find that spot again. Come on, come on. Don't make me pan out and find you. It's like that's what I'm going to have to do. All right, here it is, man. We passed it. Again, here we go. All right. So we know we want to be trading down. And we know the high wants to go behind the weekly level. I mean, the high of the previous week, which is right here. Since we had a level that was so close, we just took the stop loss back here. But essentially, we want to essentially we want to go anywhere behind the high of the previous week. Now, what's what's so important about going behind the high of the previous week? Well, here's why you go behind the high. Because I'm in a short position, right? I'm on a sell. How do I know that my sell analysis is wrong? Here's how you would know. If price breaks the high of the previous week, that means we're going up instead of down. So as long as price can come out, can retrace all the way back in here. If it doesn't break this high, you are still in a sell position. You are still in the seller's market. The reason why, the only reason you would you would your bias would change from sell to buy is if price broke this high if price breaks the previous week high then essentially you want to trade up to the next week's high you get it i'm not talking about a simple overrun of the level i'm talking about it breaks it it comes back to retest and then it goes back high again right so that's how you know you're in a buy but nevertheless so you want to wait for momentum to shift back to the downside Go in short, put a stop loss behind the previous week. That's uh, 319 pips. Remember, you're on the GBP, you're, you're on the uh, GBP JPY. So 319 pips is like is like a, a good weekly move. That's how it moves. 
stop loss back here um hold on let's see go in here stop loss will be back here so let's just say 300 pips look you get that easy you get that by the end of the next week you get that by the end of the next week easy 350 pips in essentially about seven or eight trading days man that's a good trade let's look at another trade how this thing works because guys remember the reason why it works so good because on the four hour time frame it goes from week that those session breaks are week to week so let's pull up another pair any pair it doesn't even matter let's pull up you know what let's pull up gold let's pull up gold let's get this back off the chart let's get rid of this line this is too easy right here we're not going to even look at this because this is real obvious is real clear so let's go let's go to another uptrend so here on the weekly chart it's bouncing off this level right here to go up but let's say we missed that move we missed the move. We don't need to hit the reversal moves on the weekly. We just want to see trend direct. Say we 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 don't we see this right here. We getting in the trade right here, right? We see this right here, right? And let's just say we think price is going all the way back up to this level. So essentially, our trading week could be this week right here. Again, let's go down to the four-hour chart. What are we looking for on the four-hour time frame? We just looking for since it's buyers, since it's a buyer's market, we want to see the market create sellers. Here's how it creates sellers. Pay attention. This is how the market creates sellers. And I never even looked at this. Oh, this one looked like it shot straight up. Look right here. How does the market create sellers? So this is essentially where the week started at. But look what the market did. In order to get this move to the upside, it faded price all the way down. Faded price all the way down. It gave you a turnover on the oscillator right there. So when the week started, you was already in the up move. Right? So let's look at another example. Let's look at another buy example. Let's say you are in this particular move right here. You catch this. So you'll... All right. So you see this. You notice it here. So the week you're going to start trading is here. Since I'm, on, I'm, in, I'm in the uh, United States... Uh, Eastern Standard Time. So my trading week starts on Sunday at 5 p.m. Eastern. Uh, that's that's when it starts. So right here, Sunday, 5 p.m. Eastern. I'm looking at this. I'm I'm projecting price to go up, go up to this level, right? So what I need to see, what I want to see at the beginning of the week, I want to see price fade down, create sellers to get back in that buy direction. Now I never looked at these charts before, so I'm hoping. I'm hoping it's it, what it does because it's what it, what it normally does so you can see what I mean in order for you to for the market to be bought it has to create sellers guys there it is right there it's perfect so the market came out on Sunday right it faded down you see it fading down when it does this it creates sellers because now people want to go short they think the market is going short but you know the overall direction is up because you've already taken look, a look at the weekly chart. You know you only want to trade to the upside. So the market fades down to create the sellers. And when once it gives you momentum back to the upside right here, that's when you take your position. Where does the stop loss go? Behind the low of the previous week. 118 pips. You see that? straight to the moolah let me give you one more let's pick another pair that was gold let's go to the nzd chf the new zealand swiss frank i don't cherry pick my um pairs i just pick them off the chart all right so let's look at a more recent move started mo so one two three a month a month about five weeks ago that's when this move started right but let's say we didn't catch this move because we don't look at weekly um, time frame. Let's say you haven't been looking. But now you go back and look at the weekly and you're right there. You're right there on this move. So you think price is going to continue down. You notice this at the close of a week. So boom. You want to go ahead and this is your trading week right here. Right? This is your trading week. So let's go to the four hour. In order to go short for the market to sell off short, it has to create a scenario where you think you're going to buy, right? It has to effectively has to have a pullback. So look, comes out during the week, four hour time frame. Pulls up, pulls up, 
gives you a turnover and the momentum. Here's your sale. Stop loss goes behind the high of the week. 70 pips. Straight to the moolah. Straight to the moolah. So what you're using for that strategy, you're using a weekly chart to give you the direction and on a four hour time frame, because again, from this line to this line represents one week. So on a four hour time frame, essentially you're looking for a pull back into the level. Once the momentum turns over to go back into the direction of the weekly chart, you take the trade and put the stop loss behind either the swing high or the swing low of the previous week. Go for a one to one risk to reward ratio and let that thing ride. I'm out.